Hello everyone, this is part 11 of our Zoom tutorial. We have now all the information except the rain gauge and uh, we have to insert the information on the rain gauge. We click twice on the rain gauge and the property dialog will appear. There are not so many information requested. Name is automatically generated. Like I've said, if the area is very big, you might have several rain gauge influence in different uh, sub catchment. The coordinates do not play any role. Description uh, and tag as usually. You have three type of rain format, intensity, volume and cumulative. If you are in a monetary situation, you might not have time to find the right information about the rain but if you have time you could always contact the meteorological institute or the university especially the civil engineer part of the university they might give you some information about the rain intensity with f1 as usually you can get more information you have the rain interval that's the recording time between gauge readings there's no catch factor that allows you to consider a snowfall into the system and uh, data source. Here you have two possibility, time series or file. If you are working in North American area, you can always get the data directly from this web page. Here you open mapping tool and then you can see the area covered by the this data you see here all this uh, yellow point are the point consider directly in this web page but for example we don't have anything in Syria we have someone on the North Pacific Ocean but nothing in Africa and nothing in Syria therefore is this page for us not that much interesting the likelihood that we are working in North America is very low and we have to find some other sources. I could find through the internet another page which will be displayed in the notes below the video and this is the page weather spark and here you have um, average weather in the area of interest just browse to the place of interest for example Edlib in Syria and then here you will have the average weather in Idlib which is fine for us and then you have more detailed information this information is summarized monthly you have the temperature with the cloud coverage the daily chains of precipitation you can see already here it's clearly that in January and in December is the moment where we might expect more information. And then we have the monthly rainfall. It is in inch, but you can change it in a centimeter and meter down up there. So now here we can see the average monthly rainfall. We have in January average around 63 millimeter and in December average around 60 but we can have peak up to 120 millimeter in these months. The sun, the moon, humidity, the wind, water temperature, and the other factors that are not really important for us. We can start with these figures of average monthly rainfall. So we can expect maximum 120 millimeter in December and November and we can work with these parameters. The issue is that, that we don't know in how many days this rain will fall. Here we can put some assumption. We can assume that this rain comes down over six days for example. Definitely with this assumption we have no idea if you are dealing with the 50 years rainfall, 20 years rainfall. What we know is that it is um, reasonable rainfall over one month and you might ask local people and understand how many days in December for example it rains and how many hours per day it rains. On the long term you have to look for more precise and recognized data. Let's start with our assumption. We open our Excel file. We know that in December and in January we have 120 millimeter 
we can assume that this water rains over four days. This is an assumption, not true, but for sure this is an assumption that causes a lot of water. So it means 120 millimeter divided by 4, it's 30 millimeter per day. In four days it rains 30 millimeter. Now we do not accept that all this rain falls down during 24 hours, but during 6 hours. So it means that for every hour we have a, an intensity of 5 mm per hour. Again, I repeat, this is an assumption that I do, is not verified, might not be true, but at least we can start the simulation and we can have an idea about the rain coming to our drainage. On the longer term, you should definitely look for more precise data. Let's go back to our swim example. We open the property dialog for the rain gauge. We choose the right rain format. We have decided to work with rain intensity, 5 mm per hour for 6 hours. Time interval, we say that we are going to change our intensity every hour. So that's why I type 1 hour. Snow catch, we do not consider snow. Data source, we don't have a file but we have a time series, which is not defined yet. To define the time series, we click on time series here, and we add one time series. So we are going to consider one day, so I type the name of the time series. I can add any type of description, and now here I need to write the time. I want to consider 24 hours, therefore I type the 24 hours. Now I have to decide when I want to have the rainfall. You can ask local people when it is the most likely time in a day when it rains. I don't know it, so I say I will start to have the rain at 9 o'clock in the morning and 5 mm per day. And the rest zero. So it rains from 9 o'clock in the morning up to 2 o'clock in the afternoon very heavily. I have created a time series. Let's check this time series again. Let's check it again. Okay, looks fine. Okay, now I need to link again our rain gauge to the time series and this time I can automatically see that the name appears here. Okay, that's fine. At this point I should have inserted all the information and I can run the analysis. But before running the analysis I need to check other parameters.